Janan, in trying to understand how the world is constructed at very fundamental levels, I like to look for concepts. And the concept of symmetry seems to work at all different levels. Certainly in the microphysics and quantum mechanics, it's very important for understanding it. But if we look at how trees are work or how people appreciate beauty and men and women, symmetry is very important at all of these levels. Is that, is that a coincidence or something deeper there? The reason that there's so much symmetry in nature is that nature likes to copy. She makes one thing and then she copies it over and over again. And this shows up in all kinds of ways, as you said, in, at all kinds of different levels. So symmetry is a kind of regularity, and it's a regularity that we're, our minds are attuned to recognize. In fact, I'm, one of my favorite ways of describing Newton's special talent as a mathematician, uh, as a physicist, sorry, is that um, he had a kind of eye attuned to the mathematizable substructure of nature. That's a quote that Whitehead used. And what he was really meaning was Newton recognized the kind of symmetries underlying the sort of surface irregularity that there is in nature. So really symmetry is the most fundamental kind of of um, regularity and it arises because nature copies nature copies at every level so describe to me how symmetry works at at some of these levels start at the most fundamental level well there are different types of symmetries symmetry is really a notion um, that's that is defined by mathematics as an operation that you can perform to some object and by object here, I, I don't mean literally a material object. It can be a material object, it can be a mathematical object, it can be a state space, it can be a geometric figure. But a symmetry is an operation that you can perform to an object that leaves the object unchanged. So the basic sort of intuitive um, examples that we, that we give are drawn from geometry. So consider a square. There are various operations that you can perform to a square that would leave the square unchanged. You can rotate it through uh, 360 degrees. You can rotate it through 180 degrees. You can draw a line down the center and reflect it through that line. Those are all mathematical operations that you can perform that would leave the, the square unchanged. A circle has a higher degree of symmetry you can see from a square because you can rotate it through any angle and it will remain unchanged. Most geometric objects, you can trans transfer them in space, and they will be geometrically unchanged. So it turns out to be actually quite general concept, and that we can apply um, not just to sort of material things, but we can apply to the spaces that we use to describe the properties of things. We can even apply it to physical laws. So it's, it, it allows us to recognize regularities at different levels. And so uh, what happens when symmetry is broken? Because the breaking of symmetry is extremely important for the existence of the world, both on the uh, microphysical level as well as uh, the appreciation of our macroscopic environment. Right. So I started out by saying nature loves to copy. Nature loves to copy so much that if there were no symmetry breaking, there would be very little differentiation. So we need a combination of regularity and randomness to get a lot of interesting sorts of structure in the world. And a lot of the randomness, so the regularity comes from laws, and the randomness comes from the breaking of symmetries. And if it were only um, the symmetry, we'd have <laughs> everything would be the same. There wouldn't be very much. And if everything was random, there'd be nothing. And so we need a combination of both. Exactly right. And how does that work on, on different levels? How does it work in quantum physics? How does it work in the, re in the macroscopic world? In quantum physics, you can see that um, even when you talk about indeterminism, that in a way that's a kind of symmetry. Mm -hmm. sure. It tells you it's a symmetry breaking that occurs over time. Um, in the relationship between the, the microscopic level and higher levels, there's also a kind of symmetry breaking that people talk about in terms of the emergence of spontaneous symmetry breaking. And what happens there is when you scale up effectively, um, you get differences from sameness. Mm -hmm. So you can start two systems in what looks like the same state, right? and then for no apparent reasons, they'll differentiate. Because of the inherent indeterminism 
of the system based on the probabilistics in at the most fundamental level of quantum physics. Right. So if you've got a system that's that's always being subject to kind of random perturbations at the microscopic level, right, then even if the systems are behaving in a quite regular way, there will be kind of noise, indeterministic noise, that can, under the right conditions, nudge them from one state to another. To give a, a real macroscopic view is, is how we look at art or how we judge beauty, whether it's in human faces or in, in art. And if everything were totally symmetrical, it would be very boring. And if everything were totally chaotic, maybe some modern art would look good to vacation, but even there, there's a certain kind of symmetry that, that, that brings uh, a joy to the chaos. That's exactly right. And it's not an, you know, we exploit the regularity in nature, persons. I mean, that's sort of, we're cognitively constructed to recognize and exploit regularities in nature in order to realize our own ends. Um, and so the human mind is this wonderfully evolved instrument for recognizing and finding pleasure in regularity. And I, you know, a large part of art is exercising that part of the mind that's attuned to the recognition of regularity. So on these vast scales, from quantum mechanics on the most microscopic level to the uh, existence of, uh, of uh, edifices and plants and trees to the, our appreciation of art, symmetry and the breaking of the symmetry through asymmetries invest in all of this. And our minds are able to appreciate all of it. That's right. How, how, does, that, uh, how does that make you feel? People will, you'll often hear physicists say that one of the most pleasant um, things in physics is recognizing the absolute beauty of nature when you look below the surface. And by that they mean, I think, the ability to recognize the kind of underlying asymmetries that, go, that are much more beautiful and much more pervasive um, it, that, you know, that you see when you see nature described in mathematical terms. So the kind of symmetry that we see when we look at a beautiful face or or a, a beautiful building, or bridges, because bridges by kind of engineering necessity have to possess certain kinds of symmetries. Um, those the physicist sees, not, not just sort of in the visual impression, but in the mind's eye, when they see the abstract representation of nature. 